Hello, and welcome to this week's Go No Go show here on Stock Charts TV. My name is Tyler Wood. I am a CMT charter holder and co founder of Go No Go Charts. Uh, Alex Cole is not with me this week. You know, he's stuck in his trailer, hair and makeup, uh, doing a little extra work, uh, but we hope to have him back next week. Uh, as uh, as we talked about last week, uh, markets were starting to heat up. Uh, it's it's hot and humid in the mountains of upstate New York, but uh, markets have been cooling off. So let's uh, let's do this together this week. Let's dive into the charts, starting with the S and P five hundred. These last few days of this holiday shortened week uh, of U.S. market equity trading have been to the downside. Uh, heaviness uh, across the map in terms of the index trading. If we zoom in on just these last couple of days. You might remember last week, Alex and I were talking to you about the the strength of the rally bringing us out of these no-go trend conditions into neutral territory. The amber bars represent that composite blend of technical indicators that are in the background, uh, all reaching their neutral territory. If you are new to Go No Go charts, uh, welcome. What we're looking at here is is a proprietary trend following model. So it's a blend of multiple indicators uh, that help us understand the, the strength and the direction of the trend. But we wanna keep it a simple color-coded price bar uh, to reduce the analysis paralysis. We wanna let data visualization work to our advantage, not against us. So the weight of the evidence behind the scenes computed in the background represented here by these color-coded bars the last couple of days have brought us back into no-go trend conditions. Yesterday, heavier than uh, than today, we're in weak no-go conditions on these pink bars. Uh, you might have also heard Alex and I talk about the importance of moving back above the zero line on the go-no-go no go oscillator. Same concept there. We're blending multiple momentum tools into a single oscillator that's going to give us a picture of momentum. We can spot things like divergences, oversold, overbought levels. Uh, what we're seeing right now is that volume has lightened. So when we go from this dark blue back to the uh, aqua green line, uh, we're, we're seeing lighter relative volume. Uh, that's light volume on these down days. And of course, we're back testing the zero line. So we're not into negative momentum yet. Uh, what we're seeing is the, the background, the composite blend of momentum indicators are all in their neutral territory. Uh, so not the end of the world here for the uh, index uh, view on US equities, but we are seeing no-go trend conditions on this daily chart with an oscillator testing the zero line. As we like to do with go no go charts, uh, let's take a little broader view of the markets. This is a weekly time frame. Uh, looking at the S&P 500 through that downtrend of 2022, this rally in 2023 holding strong go conditions. So again, on a longer time frame perspective, we're still uh, in strong go conditions. We did pop off the zero line last week. We're re back retesting this week. Um, so that might give you a little more context in how to think about uh, these last couple days of, uh, of heaviness in the markets. All right, as we like to start our show each week, let's take a look at the cross asset heat map. What we're doing here is taking those same pure absolute price trends, but looking just at the trend conditions so we can spot these colors across the asset classes. So starting from the top panel, the S&P 500, which we just covered on that daily basis, coming back out of those amber neutral territory, back into no-go conditions on the daily basis. We've seen treasury bond prices trailing off, which of course moves inverse to rates. Uh, rates are rising as bonds sell off in heavy no-go conditions. Uh, the third panel is a U.S. commodity index, strong go conditions back again uh, last week and this week, a real out, out performer uh, for uh, asset class allocation decisions. Uh, commodities have been on a tear and we're going to talk at length about energy today. We also can see a chart of the U.S. dollar. UUP is the ticker symbol that we look at. Uh, dollar strong. Uh, and against a, a global basket of currencies, uh, the dollar is uh, is shining brightly. Uh, so we're back in strong go conditions for the U.S. dollar. Uh, that lowest panel is Bitcoin representing the uh, emerging or trying to emerge cryptocurrency asset class. Uh, we're still in strong no-go conditions there on Bitcoin, despite some uh, some higher volatility, some big up days over the last couple of weeks. So as we like to do, we're going to take a look at some global macro factors that are affecting our equity investments, starting first with interest rates. Treasury bond yields, uh, here the TNX represents our 10-year U.S. Uh, sovereign bond yields. 
This is, again, we're going to start all of these charts on the weekly view just to give us some context. Uh, higher for longer was the commentary from uh, Fed President Jerome Powell at the Jackson Hole Summit. A lot of interpretation about uh, perhaps not a rate hike uh, this next meeting, but certainly at the following meeting and before the end of the year, uh, Wall Street is pricing in a higher expectation for yet another rate hike. Uh, we at Go No Go Charts don't pride ourselves on speculating about the narratives. Instead, we like to look at what's actually happening in the market. So on this weekly time frame, uh, still in kind of this range bound channel. Yes, we're seeing strong go conditions on this weekly basis, and we do have positive momentum. So we're up here at a, a three, not overbought yet, uh, but certainly not ripping higher. If we dive into the daily view just to see what's been going on this week, we did come back uh, into strong go conditions on Tuesday. Uh, we are still at the zero line with the go no go oscillator. So a dip below, we had some uh, uh, some sell off in the treasury yields or some bond buying. Uh, the bond selling has uh, has picked up again this week and we are seeing yields rising in these strong go conditions, but not yet a runaway momentum situation. Uh, we have not even seen any of these trend continuation icons that you might be familiar with from some of the educational videos that Alex and I have shared recently. So higher for longer, we're still within this range uh, and, and around 4% on the 10 year. If we switch our eye to the chart of the US dollar, again, starting with that weekly time frame, uh, we had uh, we had this range bound chop uh, really for all of uh, 2023 year to date. Uh, we have broken out of that range. We are on strong blue go trend conditions and look at momentum. We're at an overbought level of five. Uh, we have not seen volume pick up on the currency side. Uh, again, we're using the ETF UUP so we can get a sense of volume, uh, uh, which you don't on a traditional currency index, but we are seeing that uh, those conditions pick up. We've broken out of that uh, range bound choppiness and uh, taken off higher. So will we retest the highs of 2022? Uh, that's anybody's guess, but uh, probabilities being on our side, trends tend to continue uh, longer than we can stay solvent. So if we dive into the daily view of this same chart of the US dollar index, we can see how that price action uh, really followed just the, the textbook approach, right? We had uh, the breakout of this range above uh, a resistance area here at about uh, 30, and we came back down to retest. That's that concept of polarity that Alex and I talk about all the time on this show. It's so critical to understand in terms of investor behavior and anchoring to important price levels. So if we, uh, if we just throw a horizontal trend line right on our chart, we can see that uh, we came back to retest that area and indeed found support at what had been resistance, right? So uh, technical analysis tells us that once broken through an area of resistance can turn into support. And indeed we saw that retest. And this week we have just a uh, strong day on Friday, but gapped higher and taken off even further. Lots of follow through strength in the US dollar these last three days. Uh, if we turn our eye to the go no go oscillator we're going to see heavy volume again using the etf uup heavy volume on this dollar index at an extreme overbought rating of six now the misinterpretations of uh, of george lane and wells wilder's stochastics and rsi respectively uh, we don't sell overbought as an automatic uh, trade signal instead we can see that uh, many securities that are in trend can read consistently overbought and can sustain extreme overbought levels uh, for some time. So that to, to my reading of this chart, a uh, lot of strength in the US dollar index, uh, certainly could be placing some of those headwinds on risk assets and, and US equities. Let's take a look at some of the commodities. Uh, again, a weekly chart of USO, our oil chart that uh, you may have seen every single week for the last year in this uh, trudging downward, uh, drifting lower, no-go trend. Uh, we did see the break of the max squeeze on the gonna go oscillator down here, back into positive territory, that positive momentum preceding the change in trend conditions, going from strong no-go to weak no-go, into amber go fish bars, into our weak go trend, and now we're seeing 
strong go trend conditions on the weekly basis for this chart of oil, USO uh, being the tick ticker symbol for this ETF. We're at four. We've just come off of an overbought reading. Uh, that's where we're seeing this trend correction icon. So on a weekly basis, uh, we might see an intermediate period high here at this uh, 77.85 level. Uh, but when we dive into the daily basis, let's take a look at what's happening with price action this week. Uh, so remember that weekly bar, this week still in play. We saw momentum coming off of an extreme overbought reading. We've just sort of stagnated. We're consolidating over time, not consolidating or contracting on those price gains. So US oil uh, looking really strong on this chart. Again, breaking above uh, what were prior resistance areas, consolidating some of these recent gains, uh, but in strong trend conditions on heavy volume with an extreme overbought reading, uh, just coming back to five here on the daily chart. Let's take a look at gold. Again, starting with the weekly, we've been drifting lower on gold on this weekly basis. Like I said at the beginning of today's show, trend following indicators tend to be lagging indicators. We're, we're looking in the rear view mirror against historical price averages. Uh, but what we're seeing is that we're we're holding the go trend conditions on gold on this weekly chart. Uh, last couple of weeks, we've seen strong go conditions. We are coming back to retest the zero line from below. So that threat to the go trend that we saw in uh, early spring, May and June, uh, we saw a, a max go no go squeeze build up here on the momentum oscillator. Go no go broke below zero. That's a direct threat to any upward trend, seeing enthusiastic selling or negative momentum again on this weekly basis. We weakened uh, in terms of trend conditions to a weak go trend back to a strong go. And again, we uh, retested that zero line headed back to, uh, to negative territory. We're right back there again, folks, at the zero line. We haven't really moved substantially lower, perhaps uh, put put in a lower high. Uh, but what we're looking for right now is some directional uh, advice from our go no go oscillator. The momentum tends to lead price. And if we look at this on the daily basis, we're going to see that we're in strong no-go conditions on the daily chart of gold. Uh, we're looking at an ETF GLD, uh, but we, we attempted to break out of this daily no-go trend with this move above the zero line in, go, in the go-no-go -no -go oscillator. We've seen volume dry up a little bit. Uh, we've come back to retest the zero line. We'll be looking at this, uh, this moment of decision for momentum to help us understand whether this uh, no-go trend has legs. And if it does, if we're seeing price move substantially lower uh, in those no-go trend conditions, then that weekly chart would certainly be under threat as well with a rejection at the zero line, perhaps breaking out of this go trend condition. Now, last week, when we uh, turn our eyes to the equity segment of the world, uh, looking away from commodities, uh, we, we did talk a little bit about breadth. We talked about uh, this, the underlying constructive evidence for the IWM, that's the Russell 2000 ED ETF. And we see this series of higher lows, obviously a, a very strong resistance area right at the 2000 level. Uh, but we have again made a new higher low and we're coming back to retest it this week. So again, this is a weekly chart of the Russell 2000. Uh, we have had strong selling in the small caps as well this week, uh, heavy price action, but we're in weak form go trend conditions, retesting that area, looking to find support. Same thing happening with the go no go oscillator as we uh, test the zero line and are indeed building uh, the first couple bars of the go no go squeeze. That's the volatility contraction that tends to precede volatility expansion. So we want to pay very close attention to the direction of a break out of a go no go squeeze. Here we were in this no go condition. We built the go no go squeeze and broke to the upside. That was a trend reversal or uh, a, a break to the upside that preceded this trend change back into go conditions. Uh, we're going to see here at the zero line on this weekly chart, if we can hold, find support, break back to positive territory, uh, all signs point to uh, the upside for the IWM. Now let's take a look at that daily price action. As I mentioned, it's been heavy selling in the small caps as well, but still holding this area of support Right now on the daily basis, right, as we came uh, back up to test the zero line from below, we have 
gotten stuck there. So there's a bit of a tug of war between buyers and sellers trying to decide whether this Russell 2000 uh, is actually headed higher. Uh, right now, we don't have a clear decision in terms of who's in control, buyers or sellers. So we'll be looking to the break of this max go-no-go -no -go squeeze on the daily chart. That would, of course, inform the weekly chart as well. Uh, but all, all of the indications that we were talking about last week on this longer form series of higher lows uh, and, and an ascending triangle being built up here on the Russell 2000, still constructive. Uh, we, we're just back here testing this area for support. Um, and now if we move on to uh, some of our style box allocations, uh, interesting to note this week, uh, the Vanguard blended large cap style box is outperforming the S&P 500 as well as the Vanguard uh, large cap growth ETF. And when we look at these style boxes, these nine morning star uh, style boxes, we can look at uh, a blend of value, growth, uh, small, mid and large cap securities. And what we're seeing right now on this daily view of the allocation is that uh, we are seeing large caps outperform. That doesn't mean that uh, it's the end of the world for the Russell 2000 and for small caps. Uh, they're just not leading the market. And that's the important thing to note in terms of relative strength. We are looking for areas of leadership, uh, but we're always prepared for that rotation and that change when it does come about. Uh, Got to be an open-minded investor or as uh, my, uh, my dear friend on the CMT Association podcast, Dave Lundgren, likes to say, strong beliefs, loosely held. Uh, so we're looking at trends of outperformance in large cap and large cap growth alone. Everything else underperforming the S&P 500. Moving on, we like to look at a sector rel map, and this is going to get us under the hood of the index. Obviously, we've had some uh, some heaviness, some selling uh, this week uh, within that larger term, longer term weekly chart of a go trend. If we get under the hood and we start to look at what sectors are outperforming the index, we're going to look at each of these ETFs, so the 10, excuse me, 11 sectors, if we uh, do include real estate, uh, and how they're performing against the benchmark index. This is going to help us with our allocation decisions. It's going to help us uh, know where to look for ideas and finding those uh, sectors that are outperforming the benchmark uh, can be really helpful in putting probabilities on your side. If you're a portfolio manager trying to beat your benchmark, then by definition, you're going to want to own those things that are beating the benchmark. Uh, on this heat map, we can see that uh, the XLK, the Information Technology Sector ETF, uh, was blipping into a go trend. In fact, uh, just before I started recording, uh, this uh, this final bar here was still in a weak aqua go trend. Um, as we've stated time and again, with go no go charts, if you're looking at a longer time frame, like a weekly chart, that last bar is still actively painting according to current and changing market conditions. Once that week ends, the bar is never repainted or restated. Uh, we don't uh, we don't play into those shenanigans. But while it is live, and this uh, show being recorded midday on Thursday, September 7th, we are certainly uh, still at play. The XLK currently neutral with the S&P 500. But interesting glimmer of, uh, of outperformance there from information technology. We've also seen the consumer discretionary uh, ETF reach uh, neutrality with the S&P 500 index. So those growth equity sectors that had been the only thing working at the start of the year, uh, certainly peaking back into some relative outperformance. Uh, we have seen consumer, uh, excuse me, communication sector, the XLC, uh, as a strong outperformer uh, for the last several months. Energy is what we're going to be talking about today, though. Uh, we have seen our other cyclical sectors roll over back into no-go trends relative to the S&P 500. Energy, the XLE ETF, has been a strong outperformer and consistently uh, throughout this summer. As, uh, as we saw on that chart of oil, uh, we're seeing some strong outperformance from the energy sector of the S&P, excuse me, the energy sector of the S&P 500. Now, our next step at Go No Go Charts with these uh, with these relative strength heat maps, we want to get into the sector and look at the industry groups represented therein and see what's leading from that perspective. Uh, I hate to sound like a broken record, but again, oil exploration and production has regained strong go conditions relative to the XLE energy sector ETF, which is outperforming the S&P 500. So this is the industry group that is pulling the sector higher. And another way to look at that, uh, we can look at an ETF like XOP, 
uh, gas exploration and production uh, against the benchmark index, S&P 500. And if we look at the price action on this relative strength chart, uh, we can certainly see that that is a strong go trend. Uh, we, we did consolidate price gains. We saw these uh, counter trend correction arrows as momentum came off of that overbought area, consolidated uh, both through price and a little bit through time. And then we found support at the zero line, breaking out of this uh, small go no go squeeze and to the upside, positive momentum signaling this trend continuation icon. And if you've watched some of those educational series videos, one of the things that Alex and I have learned from some of the best trend following investors on the planet is that you want to be able to lean into the ideas that are working, meaning you have to have those very strong gains to offset the very small losses that you take in a well diversified trend following portfolio. So one of the reasons that we include these go no go icons right on the chart is that we want to draw our attention to areas where the interplay between momentum and price action is very, very strong. So what we're seeing is a uh, finding support at the zero line for the go no go oscillator. We're within a go trend and now we're seeing momentum resurgent in the direction of the underlying trend that's the secret sauce ladies and gentlemen that's the that's where uh you can really lean into positions where you see that momentum is coming back and resurging in the direction of the underlying trend gives us some confidence maybe even changes your ideas around position sizing your conviction in those trades uh and again what we're looking at right now is a relative strength chart of the xop relative to the s p 500 so oil and gas uh, a strong outperformer to the benchmark index. And so, of course, our next step within oil and gas production, let's look for individual names. Uh, we did talk about on those style boxes how large cap has been the uh, the area of outperformance. Of course, that's across all, uh, all sectors of the markets. Uh, but we are seeing some large cap names like Valero and others in the oil and gas exploration and production space really starting to shine. Canadian Natural Resources, this is a weekly look at, uh, at CNQ being the ticker symbol. This is a very large cap organization. And look at what we have done. We had an area of resistance based off of the weekly closing price, that, that high in June of 2022. So we're more than a year where we have not been able to get above this resistance area. Multiple attempts trying to, uh, to break through. What have we done these last two weeks? Uh, broke through resistance, and now we've had strong follow through this week. Uh, a little indecision here, we could call that a doji uh, on, the, on the final bar of this weekly chart. We'll see how this week ends for Canadian Natural Resources, but certainly in strong go conditions, uh, breaking above an important resistance area that's been there for well over a year, and then we also saw the breakout of a max go no go squeeze so a lot of constructive evidence for the trend of this security it's in the strongest industry group of the strongest sector of the markets uh, that's how we like to think about our top-down approach to security selection and asset allocation uh, so from a trading standpoint this weekly chart looking very strong let's take a look at the daily and get a little perspective on where price action is trading now, remember that that final bar on the weekly chart representing a little bit of uh, tapering off uh, on the uh, on the daily basis. We're seeing price action kind of narrowing into this range. But look at momentum still on heavy volume at an overbought level of five. We, we reached an extreme of six, came back to five, but we've held that. Uh, it's ex extremely bullish uh, investor behavior on a company like Canadian Natural Resources. Uh, we may not get a retest of the zero line on the go no go oscillator before this uh takes off again that's uh that's the strength of momentum on this particular security now if we move on we can look at some small cap names in the oil and gas exploration territory that are also performing delic us holdings uh has indeed just broken back above the zero line uh from negative territory on the go no go oscillator my cursor down here showing us that uh our counter trend correction arrows as we came off the uh the overbought territory uh cycling lower testing zero then breaking below we see uh that the trend conditions went from strong go trend to our weaker aqua bars uh, but again, we came back to test the zero line, built a, a couple bars of a go-no-go -go squeeze, and then broke to the upside. So we're on a positive three from the uh, momentum indicators blended into the go-no-go -no -go oscillator. And we're seeing this break above 
this prior resistance area. So we'll see how we finish the week. Uh, but Delic U.S. Holdings, another uh, strong go trend with positive momentum in the industry group that is leading the sector that is leading the S&P 500. Not sure if you guys uh, have have heard some of the more childish criticisms of technical analysis over the last few years. There are a couple of reporters, not to name names, but the Financial Times put out a uh, particularly childish piece about looking for brontosaurus patterns in their price charts. And uh, sure enough, I'm going to write to that editor because here's Sinclair Corporation. I don't know if you drove around as kids across the uh, west of the United States and saw those big green dinosaurs outside the gas stations. I used to love them on family road trips. Maybe you did too. Uh, it just struck me that this indeed looks a little dinosauric in terms of a price pattern and a long neck. Uh, so I had to pull this up again within the gas, uh, oil and exploration and production category. We are seeing on this daily basis, the beginnings of a break out of a go, no go squeeze uh, and a trend continuation icon. Certainly one to keep an eye on as we look to break above this 59 level. Uh, certainly uh, strong trend conditions in an industry group that's outperforming. And if we can get above uh, what this uh, this price range, this uh, range bound channel here and above this resistance area, uh, we'd like to see uh, a much larger leg higher uh, for Sinclair Corporation. And last but not least, I just have to point out that even within our top down approach and we look at the sector groups and we look at the industry groups within those sectors, it's a market of stocks, not a stock market. And when you get into even oil and gas exploration and production, uh, those industry groups are going to include some real duds. Uh, this has got the flight path of a brick, North European Oil Royalty Trust Company. Uh, I had to look this up. Uh, it's a small cap. Uh, it's in a strong no-go trend. Even within the industry group and the sector that are outperforming, you're going to find some of these securities that are in downtrends or in no-go trend conditions. And therein lies a really important point. When the market is showing us that a certain category, area of the economy or uh, new technologies are really bright and shiny and in strong go trends and investors can't get enough, within those same industry groups, when you find duds, uh, that's a signal in and of itself. Things that are moving counter trend to the market uh, and that could be things that are really outperforming in a day in a week like this that has had some heavy selling, uh, but also in an industry group that's outperforming. Looking at these uh, real losers like the North European Oil Royalty Trust Company, uh, that might be an opportunity if you play to the short side uh, to press your bets in. We've got trend continuation icons as the Gonogo -Go oscillator uh, broke below zero, came back to retest, and was rejected again, heading lower. Uh, on those strong purple no-go bars. So uh, certainly getting our sector groups right and our industry groups uh, can be really important, but it is always a market of stocks and you got to look at uh, individual price trends whenever you can. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope to uh, be back here with you next week with Alex Cole, our great uh, UK brethren. Uh, but until next time, take care of each other and trade them well.